Hi and welcome to the Ericsson Spotlight Series. My name is Des Blanchfield. This is the third in our Spotlight Series with Ericsson. Thanks for joining us. Today I have two fantastic subject matter experts with us today. Let me introduce you to them. Firstly, I'm joined by Folky Unger, who is the head of Solution Line Packet Core at Ericsson Digital Services. Folky, thanks for joining us. Great to see you. Thank you. Thanks. Great to be here in this Spotlight Series today with you, Des. Appreciate you making time. We're also joined by Yasir Ya Katula, who's the Vice President for Products at A10 Networks. Yasir, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate you making time. Thank you for having me. Now, I've been following the progress on several of the 5G core technology innovations that uh, organizations like uh, A10 and Ericsson have been working on. And I've seen a whole range of technology advances, such as software probes, uh, which we discussed on previous podcasts. And now today, I understand there's some exciting new news from both A10 and Ericsson uh, in the form of a new security solution, which we're going to get both the gentlemen to speak to. Folky, I wonder if I can maybe start with you firstly to kind of give us an overview of what this new security solution is, and particularly some of the outlines around uh, highlights around 5G momentum, and uh, just talk generally about this whole challenge of security on 5G. Yes, sure. If I started a bit with uh, the 5G momentum, uh, we see a tremendous interest from our service providers to launch 5G services. Uh, we have made uh, during the last year a number of announcements of also uh, cloud native uh, deployments uh, of our 5G uh, dual node 5G core. And that's, of course, great momentum. What we start to see now is obviously when we look into the 5G area where you have this huge variety of devices. Uh, uh, then that will be uh, connected to the 5G network. You have everything from very high high speed mobile broadband to, to large variety of IoT devices. We see an increased interest in security solutions. And this is then beyond what you see in 3DPP in terms of having encrypted interfaces and so on. And that's where this unique solution comes into play then when we uh, evolve uh, our dual mode 5G core offering uh, by adding the packet core firewall uh, capabilities in order to handle, for instance, uh, DDoS uh, attacks and similar, which is mainly targeting towards the user play uh, in, in the packet core. So I'm really excited about this unique solution that we bring to the market, uh, Ericsson together with A10. Mm, indeed, and congratulations. Uh, uh, extremely timely in, in both the deployments and rollout of 5G uh, uh, packet core infrastructure and 5G networks and infrastructure, as well as uh, given all the challenges around 2020 and so many of us working remotely, working mobile, where security is ever more present an issue, uh, whether it's viruses, ransomware and other general uh, DDoS attacks. Uh, yes, you're welcome to the series. Great to have you here. Um, I understand you've been working with Ericsson on a number of uh, key collaborations over the last uh, eight years, almost a decade, in fact. Um, you've been very early out with a number of cloud native security solutions, uh, some fantastic uh, work around the space with uh, carriers and service providers. I wonder if you could maybe just uh, firstly give us a bit of a, a summary of kind of some of the work you're doing with uh, Ericsson and Ericsson Digital and, uh, and particularly around this whole area of the security solution. Right. So we actually began our Ericsson relationships almost 10 years ago, as you mentioned, and uh, we worked on a number of uh, different development activities, but the PC firewall is the one which I'm extremely excited about. And I believe that it will be a differentiator, not only for our customers, but the, for the industry in general as well. Uh, PC firewall is based on a cloud native technology, as you mentioned. And in fact, we won the Best of Show Award in, in 2019 in Tokyo Interop uh, when Aten introduced the industry's uh, first high-performance uh, uh, cloud-native firewall, uh, leading the market at the time. Uh, we introduced the cloud-native uh, product as we firmly believe that the threat landscape is changing and the, need of, uh, the needs of the CSPs are evolving, especially as the applications are moving from the centralized data centers into the edge clouds, uh, and that is where the, 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 the new threats are emerging. Our instincts were validated by a survey we conducted, and uh, where 98% uh, of the respondent uh, actually affirmed our belief that security is indeed a top uh, concern for, for all of these CSPs who are rolling out the, the, the uh, 5G services. Um, even it was ahead of, of, of higher capacity and throughput in, in that survey. Um, you see, the existing uh, security uh, landscape is a bit fragmented, 
and uh, they uh, it's it's difficult to maintain and and uh, uh, moreover the legacy solutions are based on sampled traffic and that's not make them only less effective but they're slow to detect and slow to mitigate these uh, advanced threats as well which are now being more uh, um, uh, more and more uh, seen in, in the 4G and 5G networks now uh, we believe that in the age of uh, 5G and massive IoT the uh, with the very high bandwidth 5G devices uh, the security needs to be embedded in the data plane itself and that uh, security functions need to be able to detect and react in seconds and milliseconds uh, it has to be fully automated and it has to be backed up by the latest uh, ml uh, techniques including algorithms and, and other uh, uh, items uh, and it need they need to require minimal human intervention um, this will not only lower the tco but it will also make uh, the critical applications more resilient um, this story is resonating very well with, with the with the CSPs, and it allays many of their security concerns. Yes, we've definitely come a long way away from uh, you know the, the the mid to late '80s when I remember we were putting uh, firewall software on rack mount one IU machines, doing a port level packet inspection and manually writing uh, access control lists of uh, open this port, allow this port, connect to this port. And, and I like that you've highlighted two key things that you've been doing uh, both at ATN Networks and with Ericsson in this collaboration. This work you've been doing for nearly a decade around making it cloud native and, uh, and, and applying uh, machine learning in the form of artificial intelligence, because I think this is such a large challenge now and it moves so fast and so rapidly and the pace of change is so great that it's beyond human capabilities. Uh, it's probably been beyond that for some time. Folk, I wonder if I can come back to you. Uh, when we think about what we've just heard there, and the challenge around, I guess, you know, millisecond mitigation, as it were, to paraphrase it. Um, when we think about some of those needs and, and facing the potential myriad of attacks, uh, for example, from like, you know, Internet of Things or IoT devices, uh, connected drones, uh, autonomous things like connected trucks, etc. Um, you know, w when we look at uh, the estimated traffic from each of these, you know, it's, it's estimated currently where we reckon that each device could potentially create up to 20 gigabit of traffic per second, which is just an, an eye-wateringly large amount of data to inspect just from routing it, let alone inspect it from a security point of view. Um, it's clear that you really can't continue, as uh, yes sir and yourself uh, indicated there a moment ago, with uh, you know, the, the legacy or, or old school security solutions. Yes, I mean, you're hitting some, some good points at this. If we look at what the devices can produce in terms of throughput, it's just amazing uh, with this 5G going up to 20 gigabit per second. And also this uh, lot of IoT devices can also then uh, bring in uh, items into the packet core network that we don't want to see there. So we, we thought this through. And uh, if we looked at existing solutions on the market today, you basically have the, the packet core user plane, and then you have a dedicated separate box or something uh, handling the, so to say, the firewall kind of capabilities. We realized that if we're going to have a very quick response time, and also uh, to help our customers and to really build uh, an efficient solution, we need to think differently. What we come up here is a unique solution where we use uh, our Ericsson cloud native uh, principles and how we designed the user plane and then adding uh, capabilities from A10 related to this security by adding microservices into this uh, user plane uh, and the product we call Packet Core and Gateway. That means that we have it so tightly integrated so there is no, let's say, need for anything like uh, separate uh, um, cloud native functions or if you have separate management or, or multiple instances. This is basically one, one integrated solution. And we believe that's extremely important given the very high volume of data uh, that can uh, caused by these attacks and also the share amount of devices uh, that we will bring into the 5G networks. So it's a very good match with the A10 vision, having cloud native products and also the Ericsson then cloud native uh, strive that we do when uh, that we deploy to the market on basically all our packet core network functions today. So very good match. And we believe this is something that's going to be very beneficial for our customers. And, and actually, we have already customers uh, using this solution uh, in, in early deployments as of today. And 
I look forward to come back to the program to share more insights what to do with some of these leading customers. But some great points you've highlighted there. And I think one thing that just jumps out at me from everything you've just said there, uh, uh, Folke, is that in, in essence, you've built this capability into the DNA of the 5G infrastructure, the 5G core, where it really needs to be, as opposed to some adjunct sitting on the edge, just sniffing away, looking for bad things. It's actually part of the DNA of the infrastructure. Yes, sir, if I, if I can come back to you maybe for a final question. I know you work with a variety of, of carriers and service providers uh, around the world. Uh, in supporting them with uh, planning the, everything from you know, the early planning uh, of their 5G network design through to the actual deployment rollouts. Uh, I wonder if you can sort of delve into the detail of, of you know, just how important a solution like this is to them as they're deploying new infrastructure and potentially integrating into existing infrastructure. Sure. So the applications moving from the centralized data centers uh, to the edge networks and, and they are uh, becoming, they are much more mission critical and they are much more latency sensitive as well. And the infrastructure supporting these also these, these applications also needs to be resilient. So for example, if the uh, applications or the infrastructure is, is under a massive DDoS attack, they should be able to sustain that. And if, uh, for example, if the, the uh, even if it's the link to the MEC is, uh, is being choked, the infrastructure needs to be resilient enough to reconfigure itself and respawn itself and, and continue to function as they will. The packet core firewall is designed in a way to address all these challenges and problems. The tightly integration, uh, uh, the, the, the tight integrated uh, uh, firewall with the data plane is, is critical and it has minimal impact on latency as Folke mentioned. Um, moreover, the PC firewall is inline and it can monitor all traffic going through it. Now, the advantage of that is that it does not rely on samples. It has full visibility to all traffic and it can our, uncover any detect, any attack hiding in any of these flows. It's, it's again, it's not, it's not a sampling based uh, uh, detection and that itself is a huge differentiator. Now, uh, the tight coupling also significantly increases the granularity of detection and can easily and rapidly detect any offending devices. And, and can can take corrective measures. And that's where the time to mitigation is so uh, low in our case and this integrated solutions case. Um, the tight integration also is is, uh, uh, is true for the uh, the automation systems that this PC firewall is, is, is uh, uh, integrated with the automation system. That means that it can scale easily to sustain higher amount of traffic. So for example, if there is a need to increase the packet core scale either in to, for to 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 uh, um, to to sustain a massive ddos attack or for other reasons the security will go along with it uh, moreover in the extremely adverse conditions the pc firewall can perhaps be shut down and respawn in another location and that way it can continue to serve and protect the applications it, it is supposed to uh, the granular security Easy scalability and resiliency is what the CSPs want in their next generation of infrastructure. And that is why the interest is so high with this integrated solution. Yeah. Uh, it's very exciting. And again, congratulations to both of you, uh, Yasir and, and, and your team at ATN Networks, uh, Folky and your team at Ericsson Digital Services and Ericsson Globally. I think it's an amazing initiative. It's fantastic to see that's already deployed out there in a series of, uh, of live deployments. And I imagine trials are happening in labs. Uh, Folky, Yasir, it's been great to spend time with you. Have a great evening, uh, day, morning, wherever you are. And uh, we'll chat again soon. Thank you, Des. Thank you, Des.